Hello and welcome to the Built Around You podcast, the podcast dedicated to helping people build, renovate or upgrade their homes. Why is building a home so complex and stressful? Why do building projects run over time and budget? Welcome to the podcast Built Around You. On today's show, we're going to meet with Barry McCarran, who was renovating uh, a bungalow in uh, Ballinode County, Monaghan. I hope I got the name right. Um, Barry has an amazing story in that he's renovating his bungalow to, to passive house standards. Um, I'm sure Barry will tell us an awful lot more. Um, hello, Barry, and, uh, and welcome to the show. Hello, Kieran. How are you? Um, really nice to be on with you. Um, thank you. And, and you're, you're very welcome. So, Barry, um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your backstory. Yeah, no problem. Um, I'm, I'm actually currently the chair of the Passive House Association of Ireland. Um, that's a voluntary um, organisation um, that promotes passive house here on the island of Ireland. But my day job is in research and development, and that's with a for, further education college um, in Northern Ireland called Southwest College. But my own home here, I've, I've decided to walk the walk and um, retrofit a bungalow we bought eight years ago um, to the Passive House Standard as well. So um, that's what I want to talk to you about today. So that's amazing, Barry. Um, th- this is obviously, um, this was kind of the origins of your design focus. So was the whole Passive House um, uh, approach, um, g- given your background. Um, and tell me, um, up in County Monaghan, are, are you married, children? You know, what, what's your backstory, I suppose? Yeah, re- happily married um, with three young children here. Um, my wife's name's Ashling, and uh, our three children are referred to as the, the three Ds. Um, Darren, who's a girl, um, Dahi, um, who's middle, and then Dylan, who's the youngest. So they're six four and three years of age at the moment so it's a busy house my god so um so so obviously the, the family was getting larger and it's time to to um to to upgrade your house and all that sort of things and and, and tell me you you're it, it's a it's a bungalow you're renovating how did you come across the bungalow yeah so um d- just like anybody um just in the years um from from proposal i suppose to getting married um we were fortunate enough right beside where we live here. It's sort of the halfway house between Emmy Vale in North Monaghan, where I'm from, and Ashling's from a village called Smithborough. And Ballino just happened to be a halfway house. And um, back back in 2014, uh, well, 2012, actually, when this came on the market, um, we we went in to, to buy the home. And uh, fortunately, we got it at a good price. And um, that was off the lean years post-recession. And... Um, then we lived in the house there for the for the last eight years up until we started the project. That's an amazing. I mean, t- t- two thousand and twelve was nearly the ideal time to buy it. It's it's almost like a, a cheap Irish home, I suppose. Really, is it out, out, up in County Monaghan? You're you're dead right. Um, and and myself and Ashley have have watched the show many times, and we we did we did <laughs> reflect on that actually, and 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 with that, I think we were just in the right place, at the right time. There's no other way to say it. Well, that's great. It's very, very fortunate. Um, and I suppose the one interesting part of your story is that did you lived in the house for, for several years before you've done anything. So, I mean, how, what, how did that help the, the design aspect, I suppose? Hugely. Um, and it's only now we're really starting to appreciate that fully. Um, so for eight years living in a bungalow, uh, most bungalows here, people will know, um, the house had a garage originally in it that was then turned into the kitchen. And then there was a knock through that we did when we moved into the house where we had then off that kitchen a living space. But then, like, like an awful lot of bungalows, you end up with a corridor as part of your living area and you end up with two sitting rooms and a kitchen that was ex the garage. And, and with my own background, I was um, had enough inclination and I was encouraged by, by members of my team to actually, you know, monitor the building in in the in the years running up to the retrofit or in the months running up to the retrofit i should say and um the results of that were very interesting as well um our our our, our kitchen which again x garage just to reflect on it was was the average temperature was only 16 something degrees in the in the last four months before we moved out 
and then interestingly we had put in a stove in one of the living spaces and again the temperature in the room just right off that that 16 degree room was actually up at 23 degrees so it, very reflective of the performance of a bungalow too in that one extreme to the other extreme yet less than five six meters apart I mean, like, so from from what I know of uh, passive house technology, I know it's very important to get the orientation of the house right, and particularly when you're buying an old house, like like in your situation, the orientation kind of has to be right before you get there. So, so, so that clearly affected the the temperature gradients you're talking about there. Yeah. So when it came to the new design, um, you're right. The parameters were were really set. We couldn't reorientate the house, obviously. Um, Fortunately, there, there was a wee bit of things going for us. Um, the gable end next to uh, the bungalow next to us is, is actually south facing. So we end up with uh, a west elevation um, to the rear and east to the front and, and north um, to our other neighbours. So it, it, it actually works out not too bad um, in terms of passive house design and, and, and principles. It, it, yeah, it worked out okay. So you've you've west on your kind of primary rear um, elevation, so as such. Mm-hmm. So you you've lovely kind of afternoon evening light in in the in the summer, so already I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, exactly that. And then with with the gable end getting due south, and and the other end getting north, it actually works really well as well because we're sort of protected from any um, overheating concerns. And with the north side also being to, to a gable end, it's quite good as well because there's minimised glazing on that north side as well. So it, it, it works really well from that perspective. OK, so I mean, like, just from a pure design perspective, if anyone else think of building a renovating home to begin with, um, like the advice here clearly is like on a northern elevation, you have as little glazing as is as is possible obviously with a beautiful view you have to enjoy it but um from a passive house or even any design perspective you try and minimize a little bit your glazing on the north elevation because you're going to be just losing heat with the glazing as such really so yeah certainly and and that's something that's coming through a lot now um with a number of years experience and in, in teaching passive house is exactly that um a lot of architects, when they maybe get to understand or get introduced to Passive House, a lot of the thought process is around optimizing southern facing glazing. But with experience, it's it's turning out that actually protecting yourself against having too much glazing to the north, like like you're suggesting, is is actually more critical. And when you look at the software, that that really comes through as quite damaging if you had significant glazing on the north side. So. Um, I, I would actually be now of the mantra of saying, reduce your northern glazing and, and d- don't get so preoccupied about optimizing your southern glazing. I mean, these are very simple tips that you can, that anyone building a new home, I mean, if they're sitting down with their engineer or their architect, they can use this as a tip to believe it actually saves you a little bit of money as well because i know for a fact that block work per square meter costs less than glass per square meter i mean a window is one of the most expensive square meter elements you'll put into a, a building project so so you'll save a little bit of money um and you'll save a little bit on your heating bills as long as you aren't losing a beautiful view over a, a, a lovely valley or anything but um so so um so that was something you you you, you like you're, you're taking from your your passive house uh, experience um, and tell me, obviously, your, your own background, background you're a, an architect, uh, technologist or technician, Barry? So, so proud to say I uh, qualified as an architectural technologist and now a chartered architectural technologist as well. Yeah, so um, that's that's my background. So I suppose like with all that background, I mean, what kind of design team did you set up now for your project? Did you have to bring many more experts to the field or had you most of those skills and knowledge yourself? That's, that's a really good question, um, and and you do build up quite a an acumen um, in the construction industry w- with you know the, the touch points that I would have in many ways. So it was um, uh, I had I had to choose carefully who, who I wanted, um, and and try not to offend many friends that I have in the industry as well. So um, a, a bit bit of a, a tight walk with all of that, um, but I suppose the key, the first thing that really struck me was. Um, I was keen to, and my wife, we were both very keen, having lived in the house, to have a bit of a wow factor in terms of the bungalow. Um, we wanted to have, uh, so what we've done to try and achieve that with our architect, 
who is called Wayne Funston from Funston Ho Architecture, was really to, to create a, a vaulted space, a double height vaulted space um, in the kitchen living space, which would, would be quite surprising for maybe some coming to the home, hopefully post completion. Um, and the way it's now, now that the space is formed, uh, we're at first fixed stage at the moment, we're, we're really seeing that space. We're very excited about where it's going. And also in our master bedroom as well, we've got one of these double height spaces as well. So the, that was one of the things that we were very keen um, with the design brief um, to weigh in to accommodate because um, we just felt that the, the standard bungalow, you know, can be quite mundane. So we wanted to have that sort of a wow factor in. So before maybe get on to talking technical or on, a, on any aspect of the technologies or the passive house. It was that in the first instance that we wanted. And, and thankfully, I think we're starting to see that come through. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm picturing the whole double height space. No, I mean, um, there's a lot of engineering involved. Would you have had an engineer involved as well in the project or had you that covered? Yeah, no, we, we had that covered. Again, it, it, it's quite simple. Um, you're really talking for, for a roof of that nature. Two steel beams, again, sized with the engineer and all of that through, through Wayne and his team. Um, but, you know, we, we have that space created now. So very, very happy with where that is. And do you, do you have any kind of horizontal ties between the wall plate or is it completely open? No, it was com completely open in, in a third of the footprint, if you like, um, in, in, in that kitchen stroke living space, if you can picture it, um, and also dining in that space as well. Um, and tell me a slightly thornier question. Would you have gotten a kind of a budget done before you start the build or was it something kind of you worked yourself or was it a, look, let's just get into it and spend money where, where our heart tells us? No, um, I, I suppose like 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 so many our age, um, you know, coming up to, you know, having a young family, getting married, um, you know, you debate what you do. We're, we're very typical of a lot of couples that live in rural Ireland, um, you know, we're both 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 sides of the house are from a farming family. You know, there was a site um, not far away from where we actually bought uh, on our family farm, and I always envisaged that I would end up building there. Um, that was that was always what was in my head, and then I suppose just just coming up to undertaking the project, um, there was the whole build cost thing. A, a little bit of what was in our head, my head anyway was around, you know, what, what's best to do going forward? You, you know, we, we did get the the home at good value. It, it, it did have concrete all around the house, a, a significant garage to the rear, a, a mature garden, all of this. And, and really when we, we started to look at a new build versus the retrofit, the, the retrofit was, was clearly more affordable than breaking into a greenfield site. So that, that was part of the early considerations in it. I, I suppose then when to, to answer your question directly, then when it come to a QS and, and uh, you know, evaluating the scope of the project, we did do that. And um, I, I suppose a lot of the reason for doing that was, um, yeah, my own background, yes, but also looking at, at shows like your own um, the shows that we see um, on RTE and BBC, you know, the likes of brand designs and these shows, a, a lot of them typically have the common narrative of, over over overshooting you know so we were determined to do everything we could to to box that off very good very good very good and did you have to go for planning permission for any aspect of your house no, no we, we did yes of course um for for because it's such a deep retrofit um the, the ridge line was going to go up as well we were taking in um going from a, a complete bungalow to having room and roof for the for the kids bedrooms upstairs so with that the roof line was changing, so we applied for plan of permission, and and successfully got it, no problem. Um, one one of the the ways in which you know that worked really well was, um, there was an extension and it was a retrofit. So again, I think, uh, planners, you know, when it's an established house in a mature setting like we have in a village here, um, that 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 that's you know appreciated by them. Uh, you, you know, it, it's considered. Um, okay, there's not really that much objection to something like that. Like there is whenever you're maybe, you know, building on a, on a family farm or there's access considerations or you're breaking the skyline or something that's maybe a little bit, um, a bit more in the spotlight, let's say. Yeah. So like you're, you're, you're renovating an old house rather than building a new. So the planners will generally look a bit favorable on that. Um, and tell me, so you, you start the building project when? 
Yeah, so we are in just Easter, just gone past, so it was May. Um, we moved out over the Easter holidays and the project really be began in May. Yeah, um, a little bit of demolition, which was <laughs> quite nerve-wracking to watch, but um, yeah, it happened all the same and necessary evil. Um, what What is quite strange about our house, I suppose, is... Um, and I know the question you're going to come with is, is why didn't we knock the whole home? Um, well, one was, I suppose, the planning considerations we were extending and we, we had you know, made a commitment that we were keeping most of the building. Um, we ended up retaining 25 percent of the original structure. And um, again, out of interest, for, because, only because of my own background, I've been looking at the embodied carbon and the story there is quite good on that as well, even though we've knocked 75 percent of the building i suppose in one way in in very layman's terms because like most of our listeners know will be just something someone at the very beginning who wouldn't have your knowledge and experience but embodied carbon what does that mean in, in pure layman's terms now the, the the carbon that goes into making the blocks the timber um the slates the tiles the windows all of this that's described as embodied carbon um and tell me, so you've you've been at the building project a few months. Has there been many ups and downs so far? Thankfully, um, it's going quite well. Um, there has been a few delays, particularly over the builders' holidays. Um, that, that that's really the only little bit of I, I suppose small frustration. Um, we we had um, a timeline that probably would have had us in, you know, quarter one next year. We're a little bit more relaxed about that now. If it if it runs on to quarter two, um, I wouldn't be crying about it at the moment. Um, we're fortunate to be just living across the road from the build, um, which is which is very good. You're able to keep a good eye on things and get over and back every day. And I suppose another element that's fallen out of that that we, me, myself and Ashley hadn't expected is that we're able to bring the kids over and, and, and have a look around and they're all seeing them quite enthused about the project as well is, is, is very nice as well. But we hadn't planned for that. We hadn't thought that that would even be a thing. So, um, yeah, to, to date, the project has gone quite well. The demolition phase lasted, I, I suppose, the, the first four or five weeks. Um, and then from that point on, it's all been, you know, one step after the other step going forward in, in, in a real positive fashion. Every day you're seeing something else move forward it's 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 quite stimulating as it goes you know and have you a contractor involved or are you running a series of kind of subcontractors or yeah I, 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 let's say a little bit of both but but let's say maybe uh 60 70 percent of the build is through a general contractor here um own trainer just a local builder here in monaghan and uh, again i'd have to tip my hat to him in terms of having an open attitude and 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 progressive attitude to me and all my passive house stuff when it came along um th th that that's been quite refreshing actually to see because I, I suppose with with my experience in the construction industry you you don't know what you're getting when, when you're going to a builder that maybe hasn't got prior experience with passive house so um th that that's gone really well and then some the the 30 percent that Owen's not doing is very specialized people and we're putting in a heat pump we're putting in solar pv one thing i would say that that, that is maybe a, a slight negative when it comes to the sei grants and and the one-stop shop and the way all of that's set up at the moment if you want specific people for specific things um it, it all depends whether they're registered and um, some of my people that i wanted were within northern ireland as well which meant you know, some of them are not on the SEI thing. So um, if, if you're wanting particular people, it, it's quite hard to get to claim the grant and, and get the people that you want the way it is at the moment. But I'm, I'm quite close to that space as well. The, that, that is maturing that one step, one stop shop arrangement. So as yeah. time goes on, I think that that'll even itself out. But I, I might not be able to avail of it. Yeah, because I, I know I renovated my house last year, which was a house renovation again. And um, and one of the big benefits, like yours, there was a fair bit of the house came down. And we, we held a, a reasonable portion of it. And it was one of the big benefits is um, you, you, you're you eligible for SEI grants. I mean, if you're starting a new house, you aren't, of course. Um, so you have that benefit. No, primarily for the existing house, not any new extensions or anything you build. 
Um, so so there's the benefits of that. But um, and it is quite a complicated process, as you say, like even with experts um, in the field uh, and even with the one stop shop, which is a third party outfit that kind of manages the whole um, process um, getting all the contractors even beyond that. Um, it still is quite a laborious process and the amount of certification you, you have to put in place. And some contractors actually have to go about their day to day work on site slightly differently, because even though something aligns with um, best building practice when it comes to working with an SEI grant or a little nooks and crannies and little nuances, they ask you to change. Um, that you wouldn't, a plumber wouldn't typically do, or an electrician wouldn't typically do, even though everything complies with the same regulations. They're just little small nuances. So very important things to check there. And I know when I was doing my own, there was a big, I mean, the amount of um, certification work that you have to get beyond the norm just to comply with the grant is, is very considerable. So um, I would certainly advise anyone going in to do a deep retrofit. There's an awful lot of work and research you have to do before you go anywhere near it because you don't want to be halfway through. And as you say, find out you've used a contractor for your plumbing that isn't SEI registered and all of a sudden you can't get your you mightn't be able to get your grant for some the plumbing aspect the the heat pump aspect of the house tell me um tell me more about what a passive house is and how it operates and what it um a layman's expectations would be of a passive house you know in the winter and heating and all that yeah um quite quite i, th I think i have this rounded off now um the, the best way really to describe a, a passive house is is very typical of um, a fabric first. But I, I suppose my, my typical take on that is that, you know, there's five principles that all of us in the passive house community would outline to anyone. That is, you know, number one, uh, I suppose the key thing is new values of a certain level, insulation is the first principle um and and now thankfully in the republic of ireland our building regulation new values and passive house new values are identical so there's there's nothing really more to say you you know if you're doing anything in the republic of ireland you're already at passive house new value levels um the second one is maybe the first one i think there's only two that are really fundamentally um a little bit different that require a bit of attention so the second principle then would be um, specifically around thermal bridging where you have to, you know, do a little bit more work to prove that you've mitigated junctions like the floor to the wall, the wall to the roof, and maybe where the windows are going into the building fabric as well. So number two is thermal bridging. Um, and then that, that sort of just rounds off the fabric. Um, the third principle is triple glazed windows. Um, despite, you, you know, a small cost uplift from what traditionally would have been double glazed windows in Ireland, most people will be going after a triple glazed window now on a new build or a significant renovation. And as we've discussed here, there, there's generous grants around all of that as well um, across a number of different levels. So the, the third principle, I don't really count as, as anything fundamentally that different now, thankfully. So, so we're only talking thermal bridging. And then the last two principles, four and five, go really well together. That is that you make the building airtight. Um, and that and that's a requirement in our building regulations now. The passive house criteria just pushes you a little bit more down that road to get for a retrofit like mine to one air change, or or if you're building a new build to 0.6 of an air change in terms of the test for for air tightness. Um, and and our building regulations at the moment have a requirement of three, so it, it, it's just a little bit more. Um, and then the last the last one, as I said, goes hand in hand with the air tightness, and that is. Um, heat, heat recovery ventilation um, and we most buildings now will have a domestic level will have a form of mechanical ventilation employed so again the deviation to go to something like the passive house standard is now a smaller jump um, than it's ever been and as the building regulations move like they're being demanded to from people like the UN and it's going to come from Europe in, in another directive in due course is that we're going to end up at passive house at some point. So a, a lot of my decision making around that was, well, I'm taking out a 28 year mortgage to do this. So I want to future proof as best I can and build to the best standard that I can and, and the best standard to build to at the moment in terms of energy efficiency is passive house. So, so in the winter, it's freezing cold outside. How much heating are you going to, how much are you going to have to use your air to water heating to, uh, to heat the house? Or how much is already held in there because of all the insulation, the air tightness levels and whatever? 
the running cost that's extrapolated um, and predicted for our build is actually 500 pounds all in and that's based on the energy prices as of two weeks ago so that's including the cost of, of electricity per kilowatt hour here with the heat pump so for the whole year our whole entire heating bill will be um 500 euros that's a great achievement i i'd say you're the kind of individual who's put a lot of thought into it before you're kind of, you kind of measure twice and and uh, and cut once i suppose the only way we'll know um is we'll we'll tune in um in probably easter of next year barry if you're in there or maybe next next winter after that and and uh, touch base you and see how your energy bills are looking and please god they'll be 500 or maybe even lower mm. it's an amazing story um barry um it's a lot of people will look at shows on TV that renovate bungalows and everything else and they wonder what potential their bungalow that they're already in or maybe the bungalow that they're looking to buy what what potential it can have um, you've lovely stories of uh, of I'm picturing the lovely vaulted ceiling in in your in your house that you that you've opened up. Of course, you've added all the passive house technology and the amazing um, benefits that'll that that'll bring to you and your family. Please God for for many years to come. And I'm also picturing you bringing the the kids over in your arms every evening, obviously with high vis vests and safety inductions and helmets and the whole lot on. But uh, that's a lovely story, and of course, you're, 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 they'll remember that forever. I mean, that's the kind of their first time seeing the new house, and of course, they'll remember the old house a little bit as well, depending on their age. So, so it's an amazing story, Barry, and I look forward to tuning in uh, again when you're in and uh, and uh, seeing see how life is there and uh, and seeing how your energy bills are. So, um, yeah, we're I suppose just let me say in response to that, um, we're we're a bit of an open book. If there's warts, we, we'll we'll show them as well. Um, and we're doing a bit of documenting there on Instagram at the moment. Um, it, it, the tag is bungalow underscore retrofit. So, so that's really, <laughs> I didn't expect that I'd ever do something like that. But um, because sort of I'm in the space that I'm in, I thought it only fair to you know give a full account and an honest account of where it goes. So far, so good. But uh, it, we'll see what the energy bills turn out to be post-construction. Super. Well, thanks very much for, for joining us, Barry. And we wish you the very best. Well, thank you, Kieran. No, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. So that was Barry's story, uh, an amazing story, and just shows you what you can do with all the um, the the bungalows that are scattered throughout Ireland. We know them. We know there's so many of them out there, particularly up on the um, the, the highlands. Um, so uh, next week we'll have a very different story, uh, another uh, story of someone who's renovating a home. So be sure to tune in to the Built Around You podcast next Monday. <laughs>